Hello and welcome to the highlights of Parents' Evening Live, brought to you by Not Going to Uni here at RAF Cranwell. Ahead of us are three sessions looking at all different aspects of the RAF, preparing for the RAF in session one, what to expect from basic training in session two, And session three was life after an apprenticeship. For more information on what you've seen, you can check out the Not Going to Uni website, notgoingtouni.co.uk, or our socials, as well as the RAF website. What advice, first of all, would you give somebody in that initial state of preparation, knowing what you've gone through has been slightly different? Um, For me, personally, it would be find any way to improve your fitness, because it is a big one when you first join up. Most of basic training is orientated about getting yourself ready to a standard in RAF and improving your fitness standards to get you overall healthy and at a good level. So just going out on runs and more walks, especially during COVID, because it was more difficult. Everyone was secluded. You couldn't go to gyms. But even taking a dog for a walk more regularly or just doing a little run to the shops would help. Where do you start with your preparation? You know, I suppose one of the first things that comes is fitness and the test that you've got to go through. What is like, what is that like to prepare for? Um, well, the fitness test isn't usually until about halfway through your application, um, which is just um, a mile and a half run within a certain time limit. Um, some push-ups and some sit-ups, and that's really about it. What else can you do to prepare, especially coming from, from your background? You know, is there anything at school or extracurricular outside of that that can help better prepare you for life in the RAF? Um, Once again, the cadets is a great way. It doesn't just introduce you into the roles of the job you're about to take, but it gets you used to the basic military lifestyle, like drill and a lot of other things around that, uniform, the standards of how to address people. Um, Other ways to improve yourself is I, when I was, before I was joining up to do the aptitude test, I bought a book to revise because I'm quite bad dyslexic, so I struggle with that. So I bought a book to go over everything, which helped me open more trades that I would be able to apply for. I suppose the term basic training is a bit sort of generic, also a bit daunting as well. What, what can people expect from basic training? I suppose, what was it like back then when you first started and how has it changed? I suppose you would have seen that over the years. Uh, you do watch a lot of films where you get the impression that you get shouted at a lot and you've got to do lots of ironing and shining shoes and all that the Ironing kind of really comes up a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's to the phase one style and when you go through is to convert you from being a civilian into something uh, that is a military product. Um, you know, it teaches you a lot about teamwork, uh, how to rely on each other, and I think that's probably still the same all the way back from when I went through phase one training at Halton back in 98 to when Jazz went through more recently and the guys that are coming through there now. So it just evolves. We've got a game, another game to play, although this time it doesn't require me standing up and testing my reactions. I'm not playing. Well, I am playing. Uh, but you two are going to be playing uh, the picture description game. They're all phase one activities that will be covered in basic training. So hopefully that helps you out. Start Got drawing. This. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there's a bit of a rectangle going oh, on. Um, oh. Uh, not uh, CPR. Um, oh, me- something medical. Um, medical. First aid. First aid. First aid. <laughs> oh, that was Sorry. that was a record. <laughs> Is that fairly basic then? Is that one of the first things you might you might learn? First aid. Uh, no, it's one of the last things. Oh, really? That you learn. Yeah. Oh. Any, um, do you know why or? Just that's the order of it's it. It's in the field craft f- uh, phase, so the end of it when you're with the regiment. Okay. Um, what else does that field craft phase involve? Oh, everything from, um, yes, yeah, so you've got your first age, you've, you learn how to obviously fire the rifles, um, you learn all field craft, and then you'll do the final exercise at the end where you put everything that you've learned together, um, and then it's all about learning like eat, how to eat, like the ration packs and, you know, learn everything like that out in the field. Now, I've heard a bit about these eagle schemes. Can we expand on what exactly they are and, and what opportunities it gives you? So an eagle scheme is uh, adventure training, or AT, as I'll probably refer to it, uh, ongoing. Uh, and you can apply to do different schemes. So there would be maybe one for mountain biking. There would be caving, climbing. Uh, I did parachuting, uh, so that involved me applying Uh, going through the application process, putting in a personal statement and being selected to do it. So I was one of five 
um, who went to Western on the Green in Oxfordshire. Uh, and like I said, I did 19 jumps, which qualified me for the, the, the lowest level of qualification. So I can solo parachute. Amazing. Funded, funded by the Air Force. I think one of the, the main things people picture, you know, life in the RAF is maybe quite confined within the RAF. Do you get uh, to have um, a life, family, pets, go on holidays? Does that, does that work? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it does? Yeah. Um, it would, I don't think it, people would join otherwise. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I work with, with many people, with wives, children, husbands, all in the you know, civilian jobs, counterpart jobs. Um, and it all based on, on personal circumstances. I know some families who move around the country, overseas, all together. I know some families that base themselves in a, in a location and the serving member commutes either daily or, or weekly. Um, but there is always that support from that host station um, that the RAF does deliver to those, to those families as and when they need it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you want to find out more information, you can head to our website, notgoingtouni.co.uk, and we'll see you at the next RAF Live.